All right, everyone. Welcome back to Random Fixes. So before every parts arrive for the next LCD panel project, I think it's a good time to do a video to talk about how to pick up the correct CPU for your laptop upgrade. So I've actually received many comments in some of my previous videos asking me about which CPU to choose or can they upgrade their CPU. So after watching today's video, you'll be able to solve those questions yourself. So let's get started. Now the first thing we want to do is to download a software called CPU-Z. So just Google CPU-Z and oftentimes it's the first search result and scroll down and download the setup file. Click download now. It's a pretty small file and the download should finish roughly around 5 seconds. And after you finish download, double click the executable and follow whatever it tells you to. So there's no actually malware that is related to this install. That's a good news so you don't need to worry about that. And then we just need to file up the CPU-Z. So after the software has been loaded, the first thing we'll want to look for is our CPU name, which is conveniently located in the first line here. So in my case, I currently have a i7-4700MQ installed in my computer. Next, we just need to Google 4700MQ to get more information about our processor. So usually the first search result will be the arc.intel.com link and that's the website we want to go to. Alright, the first parameter that we want to check is the socket type. So scroll down the page and look for the socket supported property. Now in my case, the 4700MQ supports FCPGA946 socket. So if your CPU socket type ends with the PGA or LGA, that means you can remove your CPU from your motherboard field easily. But if the socket type ends with BGA, that means the CPU is most likely to be soldered onto the motherboard. So unless you have the correct equipment and the skills to unsolder and resolder a new CPU to the motherboard, I would suggest to get a new computer instead of messing around with the heat guns or solders. Alright, with that being said, the next thing we need to look at is the motherboard. So the CPU-Z list as the main board. So in this tab, the only thing we need to look at is a south bridge, as it largely determines what kinds of CPU can function on this motherboard. So in my case, I have a QM87 chip as a south bridge on my motherboard. Alright, next, we just need to google QM87 CPU, and the CPUupgrade.com is a pretty good source to find the supported CPU for that motherboard. So as you can see here, there's a list of CPUs that are supported by this south bridge. So for example, if I would like to upgrade my CPU for my W540, I can go for the i7-4930MX. So another thing we want to make sure is the TDP for our new CPU. So let's go back to the Intel page. It will usually list the TDP about the CPU. So as you can see here under the performance specification, the TDP for my current CPU is 47 watts. So a rule of thumb is to pick up a CPU with the TDP around the same range, plus or minus 10 watts. Although TDP is not necessarily the main max power consumption for the CPU, it's a pretty good indication for the heat dissipation and power supply capability of the motherboard. So if you choose a CPU that is about 20 watts more power demanding than your current one, not only will the system suffer from instability from shortage of power supply, it is also going to suffer from overheating. So for example, if I were going to choose 4930MX as the CPU that I'm going to upgrade to, I need to double check the TDP rating on the arc.intel.com page to make sure the TDP is reasonable for my machine. So here the TDP for 4930MX is 57 watts, which is the upper bound of our limit. This CPU can run a little bit harder than my current one, but the system should be pretty stable. Lastly, be sure to find a CPU that fits your situation the most. In this case, because the BIOS for my W540 does not support overclock and I'm not planning to use it for some heavy tasks such as video editing. It makes little sense to shout out 200 bucks to buy a 4930MX which is overclockable and supports more stuff. So if I were going to choose the CPU upgrade for this W540, I would go for 120 bucks 4900MQ instead of the more expensive 4930MX. Alright everyone, that's it for this video, hope it is helpful, if it is, remember to give it a thumbs up and hopefully the controller for the next LCD project could arrive in a few days. If you enjoyed my channel, please subscribe and also make sure to check out my Facebook page for new updates. So see you guys next time.